Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of three in our new series on sex. You heard that right. This is gonna be huge. Subscribe so you get all of the episodes in this series. Make sure you check us out on SoundCloud and iTunes. We have audio podcasts releasing every single week. So today, let's talk about sex, baby. We're gonna talk about how it works in the human body, about hormonal and physical reactions, the ins and outs of your brain on sex, how the studies on sex work. We're also gonna talk about fMRIs, EEGs, and scientists who show people porn. This is a real thing, it's a real job. And I just wanna say, this does acknowledge sex exists. It's not a sex ed episode. So if you're watching with kids, maybe, you know, skip this one, come back later. Uh, but anyway, it does acknowledge sex exists. So just so you know, let's kick into it. Okay, so sex, it's a thing. It's a thing that a lot of people do a lot of the time. In fact, somewhere on earth right now, someone is having sex. I mean, we could probably figure out the math on that, but I'm sure actually many thousands of people are having sex at this exact moment. But the math is actually all over the place, ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions. Freud would say that sex is at the center of human development, and procreation is literally the goal of many, if not most, of the species on our planet, and of course, most of those species are far less complicated than we humans are. So let's focus instead on us humans and sex related to us specifically because we're self-centered. Sex is the act of intercourse and it can involve a lot of different methods, a lot of different sexes, a lot of different genders and so on. And most of what we're gonna talk about is research done with male-female pairings. And commonly when I'm referring to male or female, I'm talking about whatever sex was held through puberty. I'm not an expert, but if you are LGBT, QIA+, then your identifying gender may be more important than your birth assignment to some of this. So use your best judgment, head to the comments or find me on the tweet machine if you have any more questions. But let's dive into a pool of hormones and biology, shall we? What's happening in your brain before, during, and after sex? Let's talk into that. So before sex, obviously you have to be aroused also known as turned on. And I found uh, an article by Dr. Carla Clark on Brain Blogger, and they actually did a meta-analysis of 58 different studies. And they looked at how sex studies were done. Commonly, they were done with men, some hetero and homosexual men, also some heterosexual women. Not a lot of homosexual women, interestingly. And the four components that they found to prep for sexy times included cognitive, emotional, motivational, and physiological components. So let's break these down. The cognitive component involves ventromedial prefrontal cortex activation and limbic reward and emotion systems, and it includes attention to the sexual stimulation, whatever that is, the uh, mental rehearsal, or visualizing in your mind's eye the idea of the sexual activity. So that's the cognitive component of being turned on. The emotional component involves the amygdala, which is the emotional center of the brain, and that's where you're thought to evaluate the emotional connection and content of any sexual stimulation that you might be perceiving or thinking about, as well as sensory processes and other attention. The motivational component of being turned on involves the anterior cingulate cortex, or ACC, the thalamus, the parietal cortex, and the hypothalamus in the brain. Hello, limbic system. Very important to being turned on. It's an ancient part of our brain connected mainly to our behaviors, so it comes back to erections, although that's only been proven in monkeys, urges, desires, and feelings of reward. So that's a big part of being turned on. And also being turned on, the component of the physiology is involving the body responses to the brain. So heart rate, blood pressure, genital responses, hormonal changes. And in males, the hypothalamus triggers the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems to get the penis going. Now, that's just being turned on. I don't know how far into this podcast we are, like I don't know how many minutes we are, but let me tell you, this is a big deal because we're not even to the sex part yet. And look at all the different brain areas that are involved, all of the different systems that have to work together, both physically, emotionally, and mentally to try and get you to a place where you can even perform the act of sex. Yeah, this is cool. So being turned on, it's complex. And it's not just biological, it's also psychological, which we haven't even really tapped into yet. In one study, they wrote, quote, the psychophysiological approach to sexual response emphasizes the interaction between the physiological component of arousal and the subjective experience of arousal, 
as well as the emotional processing of the sexual situation itself. This is in a study. They were looking at all of these different things when trying to figure out just how arousal worked. People need to like and relate to the sexual stimulation that they're imagining or about to engage in, and psychology plays a big part of that, which no duh. But not everyone experiences this regularly. There's a thing called hyposexuality. Uh, just to lay this out for everybody, hypo less, hyper more. So hyposexuality is less sexuality. Hypersexuality would be more sexuality than what would be considered ordinary or average. Hyposexual men were compared in a study to what would be considered ordinarily sexual men. And it was a very small group, I want to point out, only 15 people. Half were hypo, half were ordinary. And they injected them with a mild radioactive tracer, nothing that would harm them, very normal, because they were going to give them a PET scan, a PET scan. And they showed them adult films in the lab. They injected them with radiation, and then they said, watch this porn. <laughs> Sex studies are weird. The main difference is a tiny patch of neurons in the medial orbitofrontal cortex lit up differently in hyposexual men than it did in ordinary men. It's part of our emotion center. And the reason they were doing this is to treat the ordinary and hyposexual men as sort of control groups and experimental groups. They could see what in our brains would light up in ordinary men when they appear to be turned on. And it turns out part of our emotional center gets activated. So our emotions are definitely engaged when sex is involved across the board, no matter what people try and convince themselves. And getting turned on is individual. It's more of an art than a science, one could say. And for many females, I want to make sure and point out, arousal is also heavily dependent on location and comfort, stress, and other factors like relationships with their partner and contextual life outside of the relationship. Another study with fMRIs, which is a little stronger, if you could say, than a PET scan. It's a little faster, tracks blood flow. They looked at a temporal lobe, amygdala, and hippocampal interaction and advanced parts of the brain as well as the limbic system. Sex, they found, isn't just carnal. It's also related to emotion and memory and the theory of mind, which is really interesting. It means that you have to be able to sense what's going on in someone else's body in order to really engage in sex, both emotionally and also physically. Plus, in a Dutch study, which was separate, where they scanned men's brains while their partners pleasured them, again, sex studies, wow, this is all science. <laughs> the amygdala actually saw decreased blood flow. The amygdala is the emotion center of the brain in some cases, some would say, but it's also the fear and anxiety center of the brain, which means you have less anxiety, less fear, less inhibitions while engaging in sexual activity. Researchers think that it cuts these feelings during arousal, which does make sense. It helps people kind of go with the flow during sex. Another fMRI study done in 2017, although with women this time, they found that if they were self-stimulating, masturbating, or with a partner, they had similar brain activity to the male studies that we've talked about, except in one notable location, the cingulate gyrus in the brain. That's pain and emotional processing. And more research is needed on what that exactly means. But they made a number of different um, guesses as to the fact that pain was somehow related to female sexuality and also that emotional processing might be more important. But again, they were completely just guessing. They have no idea. They need to do more research. Another EEG study was done. And the reason they are doing all of these different studies, by the way, is because fMRIs do blood flow and PET scans kind of check where things are moving around. EEGs check brain activity, but they get faster with each level. So PETs are kind of slow. fMRIs are a little faster. You can kind of see activity as it happens, but it's still under a delay. EEGs are more or less live, so you can see exactly what's happening, but they all sense different things. So in this EEG study, they found so many different regions of the brain were lighting up during sexual activity. They were showing subjects pictures of people in swimsuits, and <laughs> the brain lit up all over the place. The decision that they had to make was whether they found this person attractive or not, whether this person was sexually attractive. And they made the decision in less than a second. In actually 0.4 seconds, people would hit the button and know whether that person was attractive or not. And they could actually predict the response that they would get from the subject in even less time, just looking at brain activity, in half the time, 0.2 seconds. So. A researcher from this study, if they showed you a picture of a person looking hot, regardless of gender would be the idea here, 
they could tell from your brain activity whether you found them attractive in 0.2 seconds. That's how deep this can go. A lot of these studies, by the way, I collected from a big write-up in Discover Magazine by Carl Zimmer, so make sure to look for that in the description. And by the by, this is all based on being turned on and then having sexual activity in some way. And none of this is about orgasm. This is all pre-orgasm. Because orgasm, everything gets crazy when that happens. But what do you think? You'll have to come back next week to actually find out the answers, and please subscribe so you get all of the episodes in this series. In the meantime, check out this episode about neurological bases for gender identity. It's myself and one of our guest hosts, Sam. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Thursday with more Seeker Plus. I'm Trace. Come find us on Twitter, at Seeker, and I'm at Trace Dominguez.